The death toll from a Russian missile strike on an apartment building in southeastern Ukraine has now climbed to at least 45. 25 residents of the building are still missing following the missile strike in Dnipro. The Kremlin, however, has denied being responsible for the attack, saying Russia doesn't strike residential areas and claiming the destruction was a result of Ukrainian air defense. ABC News chief national correspondent Matt Gutman is in Dnipro with the latest. So, Matt, what do we know right now about the search and recovery efforts? It's actually a pitiful sight that you're seeing behind me, Alexis. Um, you see it's empty there. Um, and for the past several days, there has been an army of rescuers and workers and police and cranes and pickup trucks and dump trucks just pulling out the debris, trying to find the missing but Dnipro has now declared the search and rescue operation officially over. The death toll we just heard now at 45. Um, they believe that there are still some people unaccounted for. They're now searching for their remains in DNA in some of the rubble. That's how bad it is and as grisly as it sounds. And when you look at that, and I don't know how much you can make out in the darkness, but it's almost like an optical illusion. That gap in the buildings, that open sky is where a nine story, 72 unit apartment building once stood, 200 units completely obliterated, wiped off the map. Um, and there have been people coming out here for days. Obviously it's thinned out now at night um, just to pay their respects. You can see this growing memorial, um, carnations and roses and stuffed animals and the candles here. This missile attack hit people not only emotionally, but also physically. It was so large, that KH-22 missile, that came in here and obliterated that building, 38 feet tall, nearly 13,000 pounds, that it was felt for miles and miles around. That's how big the explosion was here. And it's gonna take some time for these people to recover here. But the resilience and the outpouring really have been remarkable, Alexis. It really is horrific, though. Um, Matt, Russia, of course, claiming the destruction is due to Ukrainian air defense uh, hitting the missile, which then fell into the building. Ukraine is disputing that. What do we know about that? It sounds like a little bit of Russian propaganda. Ukraine obviously disputing it. Um, they said that their uh, air defense system didn't actually have time to activate because this missile can fly at five Mach or uh, Mach 5. So that's five times the speed of sound, which is incredibly fast, right? So their air defense missiles can't catch up with that. Uh, it's unclear how long before the missile struck that sirens sounded out here, but it doesn't sound like a story that actually uh, holds water at this point. There are some strategic sites uh, within a mile or two from here, unclear if they were the actual target, but the destructive power of the KH-22 missile and what we're seeing here very closely match each other. So I, I, I think it's unlikely that this was an air defense failure on the part of Ukraine. And Matt, we know that Ukrainian soldiers have now arrived in the U.S. to begin training on that Patriot air defense missile system there at Fort Sill in Oklahoma. How long until those systems and their teams are operational? You know, the Pentagon, Alexis, has been very coy about this. They're saying it's a number of months. What they hope to do is condense the training from a year. That's how long it would take uh, American batteries to train on uh, the Patriot missile system. They're going to do that in a number of months and try to get those uh, soldiers back out here with their Patriot missile batteries uh, as quickly as possible. They're not exactly saying when that's going to happen, partly because they're concerned that you, uh, Russia might try to attack the incoming shipment of Patriot missiles. So not a lot from the Pentagon on that. But, you know, we are seeing uh, the West stepping up its training of Ukrainian soldiers. 500 of them are in Germany right now doing combined arms training. That's learning how to integrate armor and infantry and tanks and air assets all at once in the hopes that Ukraine might get those things uh, pretty soon. Um, and it does look like it's going to get a number of tanks, at least from the UK, uh, in the coming weeks. All right, Matt Gutman there in Dnipro, Ukraine. Thanks for your reporting. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.